Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and this video is inspired by you guys. I received quite a few messages from you on emails or in the comments down below and you guys were commenting on the chords that I use on my latest single which is called Behind the Wall and it's a synthwave track. So myself being an unashamed music harmony geek I thought why not make a video where I talk about the techniques that I use for songwriting and when I'm writing songs, when I'm actually not writing music for films, which is a completely different territory and a completely different mindset, but when writing pop songs, like synthwave tracks or like pop tracks. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your choruses pop by using key changes and modulations, how you can go from one key to the other and create interest and excitement to your listeners, and also how to build tensions with chord progression. So without any further ado, let's get started. If you enjoy these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and write in the comments down below what you'd like me to do next because I really enjoy doing those. So let's get started. I'm going to use my track Behind the Wall as an example because you guys were asking me about the chords. But if you want to check out a much more complex song, go ahead and check out my Bohemian Rhapsody harmonic analysis right here where I talk about all the chords from Bohemian Rhapsody, which is a very complex song, right? But this is a more traditional pop style song, okay? So it's still not super easy and it has a few tricks, so I want to share these with you today. So let me show you what I've done on this track. Let's listen to the verse and the chorus, and let's take it from there. Okay, so as you can see, there's a big key change between the chorus and the verse, okay? So let me try to explain, first of all, how we can build tension with chords, and second of all, how we can use these modulations and how we can trick the ear so that it's not like, oh, there's a key change there, I don't know where it came from, okay? And how we can get to a very remote key. So as you can see, I'm starting with a D minor, okay? The verse starts with a D minor. Now for the verse, I wanted it to be a little bit more calm, not too many chord changes, but at the same time, I wanted it to have a little bit of a buildup. So this was done using chord progressions, okay? So let me show you. So the first thing that I did is we have a D minor. We have this chord progression here. And I've added this in the chord track so that you can see what's going on. So we start with D minor, then we go with um, C major, but the bass is still on D. Then a B flat, but the bass is still on D. Now, why is that? Of course, I'm not thinking all these things when I'm writing the song, but then we can analyze it and see how it works, okay, how it functions. So, D minor, a C major on top of it. These are very common pop chords. D minor, C, B flat, C, D minor. But when you do this, I mean, this kind of thing, many bands in the 80s were using this, rock bands and synthwave bands. It's a very common... You keep the bass, you know, in the root note, and then on top of it, you can do anything you want. And this gives you a little bit of a... Okay, it's... It's a very steady, you know, it's 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 still the it's still the verse, you know? It's not the chorus yet. So 
Now, after this, I wanted this to get a little bit of tension and acquire a little bit of momentum there. So what I do is, now when I break the bass and the bass changes, I go one step up to E. Now, E is, I'm not going to this chord, which would be uh, the E diminished chord. I'm going actually to C major, but with a bass on E. So first inversion. Okay, this already gives us a, oh, we lift up, you know, we're ready to fly. Okay, F, this is like the major chord. This is very, very close to, it's, it's, it's a relative major. F, and of course this leads to F. And then we get to this point, which is a G sus4. Now G normally is not in the key of, of D minor. We would normally have... Okay. But this is a nice surprise we get the fourth but in major because normally the chords would be first second F major third fourth G minor A major or A minor that's the fifth the sixth the seventh if you play it natural or or diminished if you play it like the harmonic scale so now what we do what I do there is like and I also have this suspended chord there because this also gives us even more tension. So we have the stability at first and then we take off. Okay, that's great. Now let's move on to the next bit. Let's listen to the second part of the verse. Same thing. But now it changes. Now, what have I done here? Again, I'm changing the chords a little bit so that you don't get bored. I hate when chords are repeated over and over again, even in pop songs. So instead of doing this, I'm going straight to F major. And then, I'm playing a G major, that's the fourth, with a sixth. And then go to B flat with a major seventh, you could call it. And then C with a sus4. And then that's a secret. Before I show you this though, let me explain the relationship between the two keys. This is D minor and this is F minor. They're quite remote, they're not very close. D minor only has a B flat and an F minor has a B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Okay, so how do we get there? Let me show you. So when I do this, you expect to hear, that's where we want to go, right? But instead, What we do there, what I did there was I have the seventh that already has a little bit of a tendency to go to F, but it has a tendency to go maybe to F major. But what I do there is I add a flat nine 
and this already prepares your ear for something else. You don't know what's gonna happen yet, but we go to F minor and it doesn't sound like it came out of nowhere. Let's listen one more time. I'm going to play the entire verse and then I'm going to lead straight to the chorus. Suspend it. Second part. The same. Different chords now. Now, that's a trick that I wanted to talk to you about. This is how you can make your choruses pop key changes, you know? In pop music and in the 80s, this was a very common thing. Sometimes they didn't use like a chord to lead to the next key, but if you add a chord, this sounds really nice and sometimes a little bit more sophisticated, so... This is the fifth, but it has so many tensions. The seventh and the flat nine. Da -da. It could go, but it has enough tension and enough color to go to F minor, which is a very remote key. So, yeah, this is one of the tricks. Now, the problem was that later on, let's listen to the chorus. So you see what happens there, I need to go back to D minor, because if I kept it in F minor, it wouldn't work, you know, it wouldn't work with the vocals. So how do we go back? Because it's one thing to get to a remote key, but how do we go back home, you know, how do we find our way back home? And let me play the chords from the chorus, these are completely pop chords, nothing special there. And then we have riff. Okay, so I'm using the riff as a bridge. Again, I'm not thinking about all these things when I write these songs, but the techniques, because I've done it so many times, it's almost like second nature. You don't need to think after you are, you know, accustomed to these things and you know how they work. And that's the reason why I'm making this video. I want to give you the tools. I don't want you to copy the chords, you know, this doesn't make any sense, you know, but you can use it in your own compositions. And this, I guarantee you, it will make your choruses a little bit more exciting. Of course, this is not something that you should use over and over again. You shouldn't use it on every track, but it's good to have like a toolbox of chord progressions and tricks that you can use for pop tracks. So let me explain a little bit how I went back home, okay? So, you know, you can do it in many different ways. In this case, let me show you a technique. So what I do is like... Now, normally I would go... Instead, what I do... I use, again, the major fourth B flat major instead of B flat minor I did this before you know when I went like this is the fourth again but instead I'm doing this is also like a little surprise there and it's almost like a ray of light because it's a very minor song it's a little bit dark but You 
know it. Major. Ray of light. Then I use C. Now C, C is the fifth of F minor. But because it, exactly because it's the fifth of F minor, it doesn't sound like a, an alien chord. It's like... But this is also a very common chord used in pop when you are in D minor. So this sounds very normal. But this also sounds also like a natural thing that you could do with these chords. So what I'm doing here is I'm using common chords. Okay? Before, what I did, the technique was I used a very colorful... Okay? A very colorful fifth with a flat and ninth and the seventh. C major seventh with a flat nine. See? All these notes, they, tr they want to get resolved. That's what we call it in harmony. This needs to go here. This needs to go here. This needs to go here. Okay, that's how it works. And here, what I do is I use a common chord. And why is it a common chord? Because... Actually, even this is a common chord. I'm actually preparing it even before I get to the C major. So... So this is a very nice technique of making your choruses pop, okay? Then we have a little bit of a fun thing. We have this middle eight here. Again, the same thing, I'm using the same technique. And then it's, of course, a different chord progression because it's a middle eight. So what do we have here? D minor, A major, first inversion with the bass on C sharp. F major with second inversion with the bass on C. C major, again, a little bit of a bright, brighter sound. This is the fourth, but it's the major fourth. Then we go back home, B flat. Mm -hmm. Again, G major with the first inversion. Sus4, suspension, you know, a little bit of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then, the same trick, I'm using the 7th with a flat 9. This time I'm not giving it away so quickly, you can hear that it doesn't play until we get this kind of weird 8-bit sounds. And is this arpeggio? You know, with these kind of 8-bit synth sounds that I created there. And we go back to F. So again, these are two techniques that you can use if you want to make your choruses pop and also in order to make your verses more interesting. Now, if you don't know how to play the keyboard or if you're not familiar with music theory and music harmony, use Scale Assistant in Cubase this will help you get all the notes right and you don't need to worry about playing wrong notes. Watch the video that I've done for Cubase 11, I'm going to link it right here, but I'm going to make a dedicated video for this. Let me know in the comments down below if you'd like me to do this. Now, let's say I want to go from A minor to C minor. Which one is the fifth of C minor? This is C minor. One, two, three, four, five. G. So, G also exists in the A minor. 
So what do we need to do? We just need to add a little bit more color. How? Seventh. Third, fifth, seven. Okay? And maybe a little bit more color. A ninth. With... This is the ninth. But maybe I want to make it a little bit darker. Flat nine. So I can be in A minor. And I can go to C minor. Beautiful, right? Now, these are very, very simple tricks. I'm sure that if you are writing music, you already might have used them already without even thinking about it, like I do. And you can go from one key to the other so swiftly without even thinking about it. You know, you can go from A to C, A to C, back and forth, back and forth, no problem. another trick but that's for the next video so there you go guys this was a bunch of tricks that you can use when you're writing songs to make your choruses pop even more and your verses sound a little bit more interesting thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed this let me know in the comments down below so i will make more of these until next time have fun and make some great music